Hey guys, back in the beginning of October, we took our Model X in to get it repaired. We had the front motor mount and the front clevis mount replaced to get rid of the Model X shutter. What happens is when a Model X is under heavy acceleration, which obviously these are fast cars, so they accelerate quickly. If you're not in very low suspension setting, you'd get this really loud shuddering sound from the front motor mount. And so they redesigned the motor mount recently. There's a technical service bulletin for it and um, now they're able to fix that. So we had that service done and about a week later, we had all of the major safety systems of the car shut off. So what ended up happening is we lost regenerative braking, ABS, traction control, stability control, autopilot, you name it. And so I called and scheduled an appointment for Tesla service because we were expecting snow and I didn't want to drive around with no safety equipment and snow. And um, they weren't able to see us until today, November 4th. All right, that's an interesting turn of events. So we just left the Tesla service center. As you can tell, I'm still in my Model X. So we got there. Um, they evidently don't have any more loaner cars. And that's a problem because I have two little kids that are in car seats. So they offered to give me Uber credits, but um, you know, you can't really ride around in an Uber for a couple days with little kids. So uh, they had to reschedule my service appointment, which means I have to wait um, almost another month. So I have to wait until, uh, they had two openings. They had one November 27th at 9 a.m. and they have one December 2nd at the other service center. So I went with the earlier one, November 27th. Um, Again, this problem started back, I think, October 18th. So, yeah, uh, not real excited at this point. So we're gonna be driving another uh, 23 days, I guess, without uh, regen braking or safety systems. <laughs> but that's all we can do at this point. Now, when I was on my way over there, they texted me and they sent me a PDF that said they were gonna replace the front right wheel position sensor or wheel speed sensor. So I thought, okay, well, the car must have sent that diagnostic over to them if they knew what they were gonna replace. Even though when I talked to a Tesla engineer a couple weeks ago, he said all the sensors were reporting back fine, everything looked good, but obviously something wasn't. So I thought, let's take a look at it and see if it's something we can fix. I wish this was, these were parts that you could just get off the shelf, but you can't really do that easily. You have to get them from Tesla, and I don't think Tesla will actually sell them to people from what I've seen from people like Rich Rebuilds, um, kind of jumping through hoops to get that. But it's pretty obvious what the problem is. And uh, let's see if you guys can see this. Turn on some extra light. You can see the, the wheel position sensor must not have been secured after they did the motor mount replacement and it's almost completely severed. So actually one of the wires is completely severed and the other one is um, on its way to being. So, you know, let's see if we can just uh, maybe fix this ourselves. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put the car in very high suspension mode. I also have it in jack mode. Although I don't know that we're actually gonna have to jack it up. I think we can probably do this uh, with the car on the ground. And what I am going to do though as well is power the car off. So I'm gonna go inside and turn it off right now. And then we'll check and see if there's any continuity coming through this wire before we go in and attempt to uh, repair it. All right, if I was doing a more permanent fix for this, I would probably try to solder it, but this is just kind of a hack, a temporary hack. You can tell, so looking at this, I don't think they actually reconnected this properly when they did the car. So the, you can see, so this is how it was hanging, right? When I got the car and normally this clips up here, which it wasn't clipped up. And then this one, you can't really see, but it goes way down here. And so with this rubber piece slid way up here, there's no way it could even stretch over to where it's supposed to go. So my guess is that when they did the car, they, probably forgot to reconnect this or it slipped out of the, the holder that it sits in. And that's why it ended up rubbing through. So what we're gonna do is 
strip back a little bit of this insulation so we can get to a raw piece of wire. Go. Let's do the same down here. Now what I'd like to do is get some electrical tape on this one since it's frayed, but it's not actually completely torn. This one's still mostly holding together. And no, I don't recommend you do this at home, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Like I said, if they sold this online, I would probably just buy the part and do it myself rather than drive around for another month without any safety equipment. All right. So the problem with these other two is that you can see how much of the wire actually wore down. It's quite a bit shorter than it should be. All right, I, normally I've, I've got these, these wire connectors that you kind of press in but I'm gonna to need to splice in, I think, a little piece of wire here. And so I'm gonna use some wire nuts that I've got. I'm gonna need a little bit more of this wire showing though in order to get that to work. So we're gonna go ahead and strip this down just a little bit farther. Grab a little bit of wire. And again, we'll strip the ends off. Might be too long. Yeah, let's do about half that. We just basically need a little jumper. There we go. And then what we'll do, we'll start at the bottom. And we'll get those twisted together a little bit, and then we'll put on our wire nut. Eh, it's not working too well. You know what? I'm going to solder it. All right, guys, got the trusty soldering iron. It's heating up nicely. And while we're waiting for that to heat up, again, no, I don't recommend you do this at home. I've repaired electronics my whole life. I've worked on cars my whole life. So, you know, it's fine. If I can get my can of flux open. All right, I got my container of flux to open finally, so let's get some. What I'm gonna do is solder flux just helps solder flow across the wires a little bit easier. So I always try to use it if I have it, because you'll get better adhesion of the solder between the two surfaces. It's always easy to solder if you have, you know, like three hands instead of two. But since I'm a human, I'm just going to have to deal. I've got a lot of solder on that end flowing. Let's go ahead and do the other side. All right, there's our piece, our jumper that we're going to use here. Now what we'll do is we'll try and get in here and again, let's get, I'm going to get a little bit of solder flux on this other end of the wire and then we'll get in here and solder our first piece. Oh, that's beautiful. Those literally look and feel like one piece of metal now, which is great. That's what we want. Now we'll try to do this top one. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. 
just because of its positioning. All right, that's heating up nicely. All right, let's take a look. It's not the prettiest solder joint I've ever done, but it's gonna hold those two pieces together for sure. So what I'm gonna do now is try to isolate those two pieces away from each other. And then finally, connect them together. So we'll keep any of the bare wire from being within proximity of each other. And then what I'm gonna go, go ahead and do, now that they're both wrapped, I'm gonna just put another layer of tape on here the last thing you want is any moisture and, and things like that getting into electrical components. So we just want to make sure it's really well insulated, especially since this is literally right in the middle of the wheel well. So it's kind of like prime location for getting moisture and dirt and all kinds of other nasty stuff. that you don't Now we're going to take, <laughs> so you can tell this thing, like half of it got worn down. This is the piece that slides into the holder. So what I'm gonna do is wrap, I'm gonna put this piece around the cable, snap it in place, and then I'm gonna wrap some tape around this too so it can't come off. That's kind of a terrible design having that there. It just seems like, I mean, I don't know what else you would do, but I think it just seems like that's gonna be prone to a lot of potential wear and tear. Anyhow, let's see if it worked. Let's do a hard reset and see if we still have tons of error messages on the car. Okay, we still have the errors on here, which I would expect. Now what we're gonna do is go in and try and do a hard reset. So I'm gonna go into safety and security. Actually, I'm gonna go into service, wheel config, and then we're just gonna change the wheel size, confirm. And what this will do is it'll do a hard reset of the entire system. All right, there's no error messages or warnings. Holy cow, this might've worked, let's see. Let's put it in drive. Holy cow, that fixed it. Put it in reverse. <laughs> no error messages. Well guys, shockingly, well, I mean, I did the repair, so I'm not surprised at all that it worked. Uh, <laughs> it actually worked. So you can kind of see here, this is what we ended up with as our final product. It's snapped in properly um, and secured. I wonder if I should actually, maybe a zip tie, I don't know. But at any rate, it worked. This actually took care of the problem. The wheel sensor is no longer throwing any issues. So I think we've got, we've got autopilot, we've got ABS, regenerative braking, all of the major systems of the car are now functioning again. And I didn't have to wait another month for Tesla service. Now, when our service appointment comes up at the end of November in three and a half weeks, I will take it in and I'll have them actually repair this properly. I wanna get that sensor replaced as it should be. But in the meantime, this allows me to safely drive the vehicle. It's my first drive after fixing my own wheel sensor on the front right-hand corner of the car. And oh my God, all of the things I missed so much are back. So I'm in autopilot right now. It's, it's like I was driving a hundred year old car before this. Um, man, I missed autopilot so much. Also, not having regenerative braking for like two or three weeks, you really forget how strong uh, braking regen is. Holy cow, it's pretty abrupt, uh, but it's cool. I love it. And also the, uh, the hill hold assist, I didn't have that. So I'd actually use a brake at um, all hills and stops for the past couple weeks. 
just, I mean, it's seemingly minor things, but it really adds up to a huge experience with the car. So I'm so glad to have those systems back because those are some of the small things that really make me love my car, I love our Tesla. So, you know, I know I'm gonna get some, some hate for this because I went and I, you know, I fixed this myself. I've had problems with Tesla service. It's still the best car I've ever driven in my life. I can't imagine driving anything else. Everything else just feels like the past. This feels like the future. I love this car. Having said that, that doesn't mean that the company is without problems or without fault. This last time I put up a video that was uh, going through kind of some of the issues I was having with Tesla service in this particular instance. And I had people leaving some crazy comments saying things like, you must be getting paid by Daimler or like all this other crazy, insane stuff. And that kind of makes me not like the Tesla community as much, which is weird because I, you know, I've met some fantastic people. Every time I go to a supercharger, I meet the best people. I have some great conversations. I've had some great conversations online. Everybody for the most part is really helpful. Uh, but it seems like as soon as you say something even conceivably negative about Tesla, a lot of people jump all over you. And it's, um, it's a weird experience, especially as someone like me that internally, I'm, I can't shut up about Tesla when I'm out with friends and family and people that I don't know. I love evangelizing the company. I really enjoy it, but it's, uh, it's odd. It's just not something I've ever really experienced. Maybe similar with Apple products, I guess. Uh, but the point is, no, I'm not paid by Daimler or anybody else. These are just real problems I've had with the car. Again, wouldn't trade it for anything else, but the reality is it's not a perfect car. It's not a perfect company, but damn, it's pretty good. And it feels like the future. Hit me up in the comments, guys. See ya.